It's now possible to build Web3 crypto blockchain related applications with no code. Uh, what we'll be doing in this tutorial is building a just a really tiny summary of a coin and token listing page uh, and we'll get our data from CoinMarketCap. So let's jump in and see how we can pull this together. So here's our basic page. The main functionality here is pulling in a list of the latest coins and tokens. Okay, and then displaying the ticket, the name, the current price and USD value, as well as the percentage gain or loss in 24 hours. We can also do something like search by symbol. Let's search BNB for Binance chain. And there we go. So quite basic, but at least we get to understand how to interact with the CoinMarketCap API and how we can start playing with this data to build products and services with Web3. Okay, so where are we getting our data from? If we head over to CoinMarketCap, the homepage of crypto, I'm sure most of you have this book bookmarked. Um, we're just grabbing some of the data here, okay? That's all we're doing. So we'll probably do, you know, top 50 or so just to get going. So if I scroll all the way down, what you'll need to do is head over to the crypto API link and then create an account to get a free API key and we can use the free key to get the data we need. So I'm going to log in. All right, so here we have our dashboard and my, my key will be basically in the box just to the left of my mouse. And with that key, I can head over to Bubble and set up an API call to fetch the data we need. All right, let's jump into Bubble. So I'm gonna to go to the plugin section and then just ignore the first one. The second one I'm going to expand, which is CoinMarketCap, okay? So if you don't have your API connector installed, go ahead and add the plugin. Just search API connector and it's created by Bubble. There it is there. So that's where you start. Then you'd add another API and just give it a name, CoinMarketCap. Okay, let me expand my current setup so you can have a look at it. So from an authentication point of view, this is my key on the right hand side. You can't actually see the full key. So, uh, so I think I'm safe there, but we need these two shared headers, okay? So this one that says XCMC uh, and the one below accept application JSON. Then below that, what you need to do is add another API call and then give it the name, just give it the name uh, CoinMarketCap. You can say get prices, whatever you like. If I expand that, Let's have a look at the setup. So CoinMarketCap is the name we're using as data. So the action is to be able to use this API call in one of your workflow action, action steps. We're not doing that. We are showing or displaying the data in a repeating group. Type is JSON. This is a get call. And here is the full URL that we need. And I'm just putting on a limit of the first 50 coins just for this tutorial. You can pull in the top thousand or so, but you need to decide um, if that's something you really want to do just for learning purposes. I'd recommend just 50, but if you were building an app around this, um, you can pull in all of the coins. Just, just be aware how these APIs work and how we uh, display data in repeating groups. So you definitely don't want to display more than 100 items. If there are more than 100 items, your repeating group needs pagination. And I have a video on how to set up pagination. For this tutorial, we're just doing 50. Okay, so where does this information come from? Let's go have a look at the API documentation so you can fully understand where I got this data from. So I'm gonna go into my account section. API documentation. And under authentication, here I can see is the 
first part of the API domain. So for all of the calls, this is the first part, first section, okay? prod-api.coinmarketcap.com. Now in terms of the preferred method for the rest calls with authentication, they want you to use a custom header named this. So that's what I've done. I've copied that, I've gone back into the API call, and um, at the top here where we're dealing with authentication, set this to none or self-handled because the way we're going to authenticate is with this shared header. So you'd add a shared header, paste in this key. For the value, that's where you want to head back to your dashboard. And you want to basically create a key and then click to copy the key. Okay, the key's over here. So you'd copy the key, go to API call and bubble, and then paste the key as the value. The key's a little bit longer than what's been displayed here. All right, and then for the second one, you add another shared header, type in accept. Now this is case sensitive. And then the value, case sensitive, application forward slash JSON. Okay, so we've set up the authentication part. Now for the next part, let's go have a look to see where we get this actual call from. Back to the documentation. And here we can see we have a cryptocurrency section. And if I click on this one here, cryptocurrency listings latest, we can see that this returns a paginated list of all active cryptocurrencies with the latest market data. So remember, we already had the first part of that URL, but we can grab the full URL over on the right-hand side here. So if I click on this dropdown, here it is here, and then I can just Command C on my Mac to copy that, and then paste it into this section. I feel free to get comfortable with um, how CoinMarketCap displays the API data. This is basically a JSON view to show you basically what a successful call would resolve and look like. Once you've done that, you will have this button that says initialize call. You have to do this or Bubble will not be able to allow you to use this call okay mine says reinitialize because i've already initialized so all being well if our shared headers are in with the correct key everything's case sensitive how it should be get call with data if we click on reinitialize call you should get a pop-up that looks like this so here we've got the id the name and you can see it's tiny but in gray you can see it's bitcoin it's basically gone and got the first symbol and then if we go down and show raw data, we we'll basically get a view, which is in the same JSON format like this on the right-hand side. Lots of juicy stuff here. You can search through to see sort of what's possible. We've got percentages change per hour, per day, seven days, 30 days. So pretty great stuff. All right, click save on that. And now we're able to use uh, this particular call directly within our repeating groups. Okay, we don't have to save anything to the database. We can just access the uh, API endpoint directly. Back in the design tab. So have a look at what I've done here. So um, tiny bit of styling, but basically I have a repeating group. Now I'm going to just remove what I've done here. Before I do that, I'm just reminding myself. So symbol is the input. Okay, that's fine. All right, so the first thing we do is have a look for your coin market cap data. Because we had a successful initialization of our call, this is now shown up as a type of content. So coin market cap data is what you're after. And then we want to choose get data from an external API. Now we can go down and find the same one, the coin market cap that we created. And what I'm going to do is I have, um, sorry, before we do that, just click on the more option. We need this to resolve to blue, okay? And click data. 
Now I dropped down, I dropped an input on the page, just a straight up input uh, receiving text. And I'm just uh, filtering, filter, by the input's value. So we'll search the name, and that needs to equal the input symbol's value. Just make sure to check ignore empty constraints, otherwise if it's empty, uh, Bubble will think um, that it can't find any related data. So we check that box, which means if the input is empty, then it's going to ignore that constraint and just show a full list. All right, and I've set my layout style to vertical scroll at 15 rows. So we can always see 15 rows, and then we can scroll down to see the rest. So on the page itself, here are the latest prices right to the split second when that was brought down and we can scroll down all the way down to 50. Remember 50 is the limit because I set that up in the API call earlier. Here's 50 over here. If I set that to 100 it would pull in 100. All right let's have a look at how we can now drop some text into the first cell to pull down the latest data. Okay, so the repeating group is set up. Grab some text. This will be just our current sales index. So we're not pulling this from coin market cap. It's just coin market cap is delivering the top 50 in rank order. So we're just using the current sales index to get the number. Next piece of text I have is the current sales coin market caps data symbol. Okay, so just a symbol. That gives us BTC. Then we pull in the name. Now I've pulled in, um, yeah, the quote USD price, and then I've gone ahead and just formatted that using Bubble as a currency with three decimal places. That's because often we have coins and tokens with a uh, decimal value of USD, such as 0 0.001 uh, USD. So three decimal places. Let's have a look to see if we can see some. Well, here is Dogecoin 0 0.3. Um, here we've got 0 0.1. So in this instance, the three decimal places does make a big difference. Here you go. So Tron 0 0.083. All right, you get the picture. Now for the juicy stuff, this is what we really want to know, is percentage change. So grab some text, turn it green, and then pull in the current sales coin market caps data's quote percentage 24 hours. So we can do one out, seven days, 30 days. You can basically create some toggle or button functionality to actually pull in the type of data you want here. All right, and then I've formatted that as a number with two decimal places because it's a percent. Now to turn it red because we have minus, I am using bubble functionality for that. So I've created a condition and that says when the coin market cap data's quote USD percentage change and then I'm just using a smaller than because that's returning a number so we've got these number operators. So if that is smaller than zero which means it is negative then just change the font color to red. Nice and simple, nothing over complicated. Let's refresh, get the latest prices. And we see that this has changed again. So this is minus 1.15. Hmm. What I might actually do, what are we today? August 19th. I might actually turn my Ethereum into USDT because uh, I think a pullback is coming. All right, folks. Well, I hope that that was a good introduction. Um, I'm going to be creating a crypto series. We're going to go into a lot of depth, okay? I'm talking Ethereum-based wallets and portfolios, swapping tokens, sending tokens to friends or customers. Things are going to get very, very interesting. And I'm also going to do quite a large course on how to build a automated technical analysis platform. Okay, this, that's going to get really interesting. But stick around. If you're just getting into Web3 and crypto, this is really the future. Uh, I'm placing my bets at the world in 10 years time is going to look a lot more decentralized than it does today. So I hope you enjoy this introduction and I'll see you for the next crypto series video.